Here's where the story starts. As if it could get any weirder. (laughs) Mark Driscoll, a pastor named Mark Driscoll, was one of the speakers at this event. And he came out after to... I don't know. Make his address. Make his address. <laughs> give his speech. I it don't was know. probably I, his I, keynote time. I, I feel hesitant to call it a sermon. Just, I don't know. I mean, after the, the carrying on that happened, I just feel hesitant to call it a sermon because okay, I just don't know. Context. I mean, I didn't watch it. Maybe it wasn't actually a sermon, but I'm going to call it a speech for now. Um, and he started this whole thing off by basically calling out this whole performance that had just happened and saying that um, there was a um, a stripper pole set up and that the Jezebel spirit has been in the building. (laughs) It's in the room with us. (laughs) And um, that this, this stripper pole was there and that this, this man was carrying on, with a Jezebel spirit and was like all up and on this pole, the way that a stripper is in a strip club when she's trying to seduce women, seduce men, Uh, seduce men. Sorry. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And that, you know, the Jezebel spirit is here and blah, blah, blah. And in the middle of him calling out this whole thing, keep in mind, he's the guest speaker. He's been asked to speak the main pastor of the church who's putting on this whole thing starts calling out from the audience. You're out of line. So now the guy's being heckled. (laughs) He continues to talk. And then this pastor, what's his name? Bill something, whatever. Bill Johnson. His name is Bill Johnson is calling out, then calls out you're done. As in like, you're done. You're done. Like, (laughs) get off the stage left security like (laughs) get yeah kind of thing so mark driscoll goes okay i accept that puts on his hat and walks off stage then bill johnson comes on the stage and starts with a decently aggressive tone i would say like you can tell that he's not happy very evident in his tone starts addressing this whole stadium full of men saying um, that he was out of line for doing this. And if he thought that something was wrong, then he should have talked to me before and starts quoting um, Matthew. What is it? Matthew 18. You know, if if somebody offends you, then you need to go to them, you know, privately. And he was out of line, blah, 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 basically. Right. Then the whole stadium of men starts booing him for kicking Mark Driscoll off the stage. Basically, chaos. the whole thing, I've pardoned my French, but I don't know what else to call it. It was, it was, it just was. It genuinely, I don't think that any other word would, would, word would suffice here. So, I just, and and there was more and there was more, but that's like, that's the gist, the gist of what happened. And I, I just have so many thoughts. Okay. Where do you want to start? I have thoughts too. Of course. Like, I'm perplexed. Walk me through the perplexity. And annoyed for so, I'm a lot of things. Yeah. Pick one. Start me off. I have a list, actually, (laughs) because I knew that I was. I knew that the I knew that the the what do I call it the perplexionist would take over. (laughs) (laughs) I did not expect that. I have a list. I have a. I had to. So gripes. I I do. Um, I think that my first. This is not an order of importance. I should say. Um. Mm. But I think that my first thing is this whole conference, even down to the wording that they use in terms of how they choose to market and brand this conference is very macho. 
um, you know, we're using words like battle and fight and strong and um, persevere and like those kinds of words that very much give a certain type of feeling, right? And then you combine that with freaking tanks and monster trucks rolling out and fireworks and um the massive screens that are behind them on stage are like close-up shots of these like super big bulky um Motorcycle. motorcycles and you know what i'm saying like there's a vibe it's giving mojo dojo right mm-hmm. and i I think that my one of my things that I'm just so perplexed about is why that is the picture of Christian masculinity that's being taught as what you should be, basically. Like, why that as if there aren't men who are like not into motorcycles or monster trucks or tanks and like and so that what makes you less masculine less manly less of a christian man less of a what like it just felt and looked and was advertised in such a stereotypical uh, way that to me at the end of the day is really not at all indicative of what it be means to to be a man. I think it's the flip side of it would be like the same gripe that I have with like um uh like women's women's things being marketed in like a you know, such a frilly, like soft pink and purple, like delicate, you know, kind of a, a way. Like if you're going to be, you know, a Christian woman, like you have to wear dresses and like things like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I think that's where my first like thing is, is just why that. OK, you know, no, I, I am hearing. Yes. Um, I'm collecting my thoughts here because i know i have so many thoughts if we were to unpack that your your first concern is how they were marketed and why this even why this whole conflict started to begin with yeah i mean the fact that like the tanks and the monster trucks and the fireworks and whatever are there in the first place is just weird like this is a this is a Christian conference and that stuff is just so distracting and unnecessary Yeah, to the real point of why everybody should be here. Like this is not a show. You're here for a reason and it's not to be entertained. Right. So, so what is all this for? I agree with that. And like that aside, why specifically those things? Because again, it's branding Christian masculinity as being, it looks like this one thing, which is just not the case, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I am a thousand percent with you on, I don't think that when we're coming to learn about the Lord, when we're coming to worship and and try to improve ourselves whether it be like in your weekly you know church group whether it be at a conference or something like that god does not need our fanfare like he he's got that he mm-hmm. he literally brings honor and glory to himself so he does not need our help mm-hmm. and i think that having things like a basically a demolition derby happening um, and you know, like the huge, like motorcycle, this and that, and like entertainment. Um, I agree. It's just, it's unnecessary. And I think it's distracting to the point. And I also think that it perpetuates this idea that 
God has to be presented in a way where it's entertaining. Like we're not there to be entertained. We're, we, we come before God because we recognize that he's King of Kings, Lord of Lords, that he changed our lives and that he has power. Like that's why we're there. So I, it kind of confuses me whose idea was that to have all of that, again, fanfare mm-hmm. and just like foolishness really. Like why, why is it there? Um, but I do, I do think it's interesting the whole uh, masculinity piece, especially compared to the kind of language that was used to admonish when it was highlighting feminism so much or femininity. Mm-hmm. Because that's my next thing. Yeah, because, and here's the thing I'm going to say, I don't think it's inherently bad to like promote a men's conference and use words like strong and persevere mm-hmm. and things like that. But it's also important to keep in mind that like we're made in the image of God, men and women. And so that means that God has all sides to him. Mm-hmm. So God could be gentle. God could be patient and caring. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. Sorry. God could be patient and caring and kind and like soft as well. Like he nurtures. Yeah. Um, I think it's unfortunate that sometimes those words aren't used when marketing to men because it, I think they worry it's a deterrent. Which really, when we're talking about God, nothing should be a deterrent. Like, if we're talking about God, you know, it's either you want to be there or you don't. Really, truly. Like, are you hot or are you cold here? So if you want to come in and like a word like gentle is being used at a men's conference, it doesn't really matter. Like, we still know that you're going to be talking about God and and manhood and, and all those things. Um. But I, I understand why those words might be used. Now, when he came in with the, the energy of like, so he, he phrased it as, I thought it was interesting because when I watched the video, there's definitely a poll, but I would by no means call it a stripper poll. It just looked I like wouldn't either. a poll to me. Yeah. And yes, it was raised up. And I understand why he was like, it's, it's giving a share a poll, which again, that's something that you know, in biblical times, like prophets of Baal and things like that, they would have these high places that they'd raise up and like they'd do their dances and they're like cutting of themselves and all these things to like worship the idols. So I, I get that. But I think it's interesting that the first thought is, oh my gosh, it's a stripper pole. Like, like it couldn't be a telephone pole. It can be any other type of pole. Like, why is it immediately a stripper pole? But to say it's a stripper pole and then to immediately jump into there's a Jezebel spirit in this place Mm -hmm. rather than like, guys, this is not a spirit of God. Like, why are we all here? Like just flouncing around? Like, what does this have to do with what we're here for? It immediately went to like, there is this seductress spirit, which I think is just interesting considering that this man's conference, that's very um, masculine forward and very again mojo dojo casa house if you don't know what that is it's a reference from barbie Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of patriarchy vibes um i just it rubbed me the wrong way because it felt like this is messaging i've seen in the church time and time again when men fall when men fall short when men are confused it's probably a woman's fault so yeah i mean that's a big part of it for me because i saw so many people um basically praising him for calling out just the absurdity the of the whole situation. Um, and I mean, I guess in theory, yeah, it's good that somebody called it out, although not even because he totally backtracked later and we'll, like, get, to we'll get to that. Um, but he did it in a way that blamed women. Yeah. Like, how can you be at a men's conference that was organized and put on by men for men? There is only men in the room. Women have nothing to do with this whole situation. No, they and want to somehow be there. he managed to drag women into the conversation and make women the problem. Yeah. I mean, one he's saying, you know, there was a, the, the stripper pole here, right? Well, one, no, it's, it's not a stripper pole. That's a, that's a piece of metal unless there is a stripper present. <laughs> like, honestly. No stripper present. 
Okay, but irrelevant ex, though. Ex stripper is the key. And honestly, irrelevant. I, to me, the, the guy, the performer himself is irrelevant to this conversation. He was hired. He came and did his job, job and left. Yeah. like And actually, he's catching a lot of hate for this whole thing, which he? I, th- yeah, which is crazy. He put on a, he put on a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not gymnastics. Um, ca- yeah, like a like a an acrobatic calisthenics acrobat whatever a performance it was based on based on his like physical yeah. um abilities. abilities that absolutely had nothing to do with the seduction of anybody. Yeah, um, I could go on a whole, whole tangent there, but I'm not going we won't, to. We won't. Let's let's stay um, on track. Yeah. So, again, like what, why, mm-hmm. <laughs> why call it that? And again, there was no stripper present, so it was not a a stripper pole. And he said, "Um, you know, a, a stripper pole that a stripper uses when you know she's trying to seduce men. men." Well, again, that's taking the sexual sins of men. And making them a women's problem. So you want to blame the, the, the women who have that profession and not the men who walk through the doors to patronize that business? Mm-hmm. How is that fair? It also implies very much what he was saying that, again, women are becoming strippers because they want to seduce men, which I'm unwilling to accept that that's true based on pretty much everything that I've heard from anybody yeah. who has ever talked about their experience as working as a stripper you know it's about the money and it's about necessity and it's about all those kinds of things they have absolutely no desire to like actually seduce the man and like <laughs> Beyond what like, they're like, trying like to for do. real for real you yeah. know what I'm saying like this is like a monetary like I'm here for your money and then I'm gonna get it you know what I'm saying yeah. like this is not that they're so like sexually crazed that they're trying to seduce every man. Like, yeah, well, I mean, here's my thing. Um, because that was the first thing I noted. I was like, okay, wh- why are women getting dragged into this? Literally. Um, leave but us out of this. My thought was, does this mean that he didn't have a problem with the monster truck thing that happened? The, the like firework cannons blazing off, like the, the, the cars getting run over by tanks. Like, I just wondered why was that the only thing that got called out? Is it because that's the last thing that happened and so it was fresh on his mind? Uh, And I I can't really tell the timing because of the context of the video. Like, I don't know if this happened the day before and then when his keynote happened the next day, he's like, guys, I can't talk unless I I get this out of the way. But I just wonder why, why was that the one thing that was addressed and not all the other things? Because when I look at it, those other things are not necessary when we're coming to learn about God, do you do you, do you get um, demolition derbies at your church before service starts? Because I don't mm-hmm. like I don't see how that's needed. I don't see how that's necessary. And I don't see why entertainment has to be shoved so forward when it's like we're not here to be entertained. Like God is not entertainment. God is life or death. Like he is like there's just to boil it down to that we're having this men's conference we have to hook the men by like having flashy lights and things like that is so sad i mean i feel like flashy lights would be tame well when i say flashy lights i mean like (laughs) no i know right it would be i'm like in comparison give me the flashy lights (laughs) yes but then i i think and you know what like it's it's hard because to an extent i understand what he's saying because I understand the significance of Asherah. I, I'm probably saying that wrong. Asherah poles and things in the Bible. I understand who Jezebel was in the Bible. Although, to be honest, I understand her I more get to that as... Too. I don't understand her as much as a tempstress. I feel like she was a, a queen with a lot of political knowledge. who knew how to manipulate her way through things and get exactly what she wanted for herself and her kingdom. But like, I don't really remember reading about her in this way where it was like, all like she was a seductress like there's a lot more to her in terms of her political prowess Mm -hmm. prowess I guess I'll say but that's still irrelevant to her our conversation I just think I think that there was a lot more to admonish there than the fact that there was a stripper pole 
and that there's this Jezebel female seductress type spirit in in the room. Which how? Because there's only men here. <laughs> yeah. And and it's like you could have phrased it so many other ways. It could have been like, guys, like, do we really think that this is setting our minds and our hearts up for meditation and worship? Like, do we is this what we needed? But he went straight to like, yeah, there's this female seductive spirit in here. Mm-hmm. 